We are here with Jan, Patreon supporter, and we are here to do a little bit of Yu-Gi-Oh! But you already know some Yu-Gi-Oh! already, but you don't know old-school Yu-Gi-Oh! So I'm going to give you a little bit of old-school... We're not going to go way, way back, okay? We're going to go back to April 24th and 25th, 2010. We're going to time travel you back to Edison format... Okay, and we are only going to give you synchros since you already know how to synchro summon and you've played a little bit of Master Duel. Okay, and you have experience with seeing Yu Gi Oh on this channel. I'm going to ask you how much old school slash uh, goat format slash Edison format do you already know? Maybe from Master Duel, maybe through Osmosis, but tell me how much Yu Gi Oh experience you have right now. Um, I have been playing Master Duel for a year, so uh, just current format. I've been mostly playing like uh, not really meta decks, although uh, the deck I'm mostly playing right now has meta in the name because it's Metaphist, but... Um, Metaphist, okay. Yeah. So it is a meta deck. Yeah. <laughs> Technically. <laughs> but I've been uh, just... Uh, yeah, I usually enjoy just uh, welding through a bunch of like weird... I guess you would call them rogue archetypes and playing them. So I do have a bit of like uh, knowledge of uh, weird things, but probably not of what I'm going to see today. Yes. I mean, I, there are a couple of weird cards on here, I must tell you, but they were all from Edison, okay, all from 2010. And, and just for context, this is right before Naturius came out. Mm. So they have, you won't see Naturia Beast or Barkeon or anything like that. They came out right afterwards yep. in the same year. But um, there are some synchros in here that are pretty weird that you might have seen, seen or not seen before. And it's up to you to decide whether they are good or bad in Edison format. Now, in Edison, there are different archetypes as well. So maybe in the future we'll do an Edison archetype video. But uh, Black Wings were pretty good, just to let you know, um, just because you already know what they are. Black Wings were pretty good. Um, there were, there's a few different archetypes, like, uh, Light Swarms were pretty up, pretty up there. There weren't, like, Tier 1 or anything, but Light Swarms are still a deck that you could viably play. There were zombies that you could play. Like, there, back, back then, there were still those kind of decks floating around. Uh, there was, like, Fairies decks back then, and, or, and also decks that have, like, a Dark Armed Dragon, and, and so Dark type things, and sometimes Black Wings still play Dark Armed Dragon, things like that, so... Just to give you a little bit of like a, a meta overview on what what kind of power level we're talking about, not even nowhere near as close as power level is right now. So keep that in mind when you go over these synchros. With that said, let's you let's get you started with the first synchro, and I'll start with one you've probably seen before, but maybe you don't know how good it was back then. Colossal Fighter. Have you seen this before? It's the uh... I don't think so, at least not a lot. Um, so, it's a level 8 Dark Warrior Synchro, requiring one tuner and one or more non-tuner. And this card gains 100 attack for every warrior type monster in any graveyard. When this card is destroyed for battle and center the graveyard, you can target one warrior type monster in either graveyard, special summon that target. So, there are two ways in which this card can be good. Either it is for finishing off your opponent, because it gets, like, decently huge. Although I guess you would need, like, way too many warrior-type monsters in your graveyard to uh, one-shot someone with this. Yeah, it would be, like, uh, 52. So, uh... That's probably not going to be the main use case, but... So to add on to what you're saying, thing. the warriors in this format, there's some warriors that are, like, in the Light Sworn archetype, but, like, um... But the warriors are mostly heroes or in this time period. Mm. Mm. And when this... Card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard. You can we summon a warrior from your graveyard. So the issue with that one is it has to actually be destroyed by battle. Uh, you could no, it would be pretty hard to force that because you have a you would probably have a very high attack 
or at least a decently high attack. And uh, so you would want to either bait your opponent into attacking into this in defense position with which your opponent just wouldn't do, or your opponent has to have a very big thing, which I don't think either of which are very likely, so I would say it's probably not that great. Final answer. Final answer. This card is in every single deck's extra deck as asynchro in this format. This is as staple as Whoa. you can get. What? <laughs> yep. <laughs> do people actually do with this? I told you this format is a little bit lower power. Turns out 28 have... plus 100 attack is really, really good. It's mostly okay. for a, oh, I summon this thing that can attack over anything you have. Uh. Because back then you still had Goyo Guardian that was pretty high, uh. high attack power. This can attack over that. Still had Stardust Dragon back then. Right? And Stardust Dragon was one of the best things you could be doing in, in the format as a level 8 synchro. But you can just summon your Colossal Fighter and attack over it, and now you can start destroying your th their things and not have to worry about the Stardust Dragon. So this oh. thing was the main feeder in, in as generic as you can get. There was Thought Ruler Archfiend that you could play um, as a level 8 synchro, but you were going to see in the, in the future cards that I give you why this card is played more often than Thought Ruler, even though Thought Ruler Archfiend is played, if you know what that card is. Thought Ruler. Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, it's a level 8, it's a level eight synchro that whenever you kill something by battle, you get to gain life points equal to the, the attack of the mm. monster you kill by battle with it. Uh, and also, whenever your opponent activates a, um, I believe a spell card or a card that targets a card in the field or just targets Thought Ruler, I have to go over the actual text on the screen over here to see exactly what, what, what it says. But you can basically just negate the card and destroy it. So Thought Ruler, um, Thought Ruler is still a very good card in this format, but people played Colossal Fighter yeah. over Thought Ruler given the option. Some people, some people and, and most people just play both. Because uh, in my mind, immediately Thought Ruler sounds a bit better just because it has a bit of protection. It does have protection. It's it's very niche protection, but it's protection nonetheless. Uh, it doesn't have as good of an effect as Colossal Fighter does. Like, uh, a good proactive effect. At, at being that much attack power, even though Thought Ruler does have pretty high attack power as it is. But you're going to see with the next few cards mm -hmm. why Colossal Fighter was so good. And uh, let's go ahead and go over to the second card and see if you can uh, figure out how good this one is. Armory Arm. Have you seen this one before? No. This looks like it should belong into, like, the hand archetype, but it definitely doesn't. Oh, it should say Armory Hand, right? <laughs> Who, I guess. Um, what's the turn? Oh, yeah, it's a uh, level 4 synchro. Also completely generic. And it's requirements. Uh, once per turn, you can either attack one monster on the field, equip this card to that target, or unequip this card and special summon it in an attack position. So it's basically a union monster? Correct. Okay. But without being called a union monster. Yep. Um, while equipped by this effect, that target gains 1,000 attack. If that target destroys a monster by battle and sends us to the graveyard, inflict damage to your opponent equal to the attack of the destroyed monster in the graveyard. So, the main way in which I can see this being useful would be probably if you had a synchro that required another synchro to uh, summon, which. Uh, I'm not sure if there are at this point yet. I don't even think there are any back then in 2010 in this format, but I could but, be wrong. Let me let me know down in the comments if there's any of those in this format that you can okay, think of. Okay, so uh, I'm completely off track. <laughs> um, <laughs> great. Uh, Wonderful. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that would be, I guess, at least a very easy to make thing 
But what we have here is, I guess, if attack values are still very important at this point, putting plus 1000 onto something so it can be over something would be very valuable. And it is just 1000. You, you could just... I'm, I'm not sure if I see any value in this over like uh, one of those bad spell cards that give like... I think that's one that gives 1000 attack. You're thinking of Axe of Despair, uh, right? Yeah. So, um... Doesn't Axe of Despair also put itself on top of the deck? If, it, if it's destroyed? Pretty sure it does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't think... I can't really think of a reason why you would play this over that. So, uh... And I wouldn't play Axe of Despair, so, uh... Armory Arm also seems pretty bad. Final answer. I'm going to allow you to change your answer after I tell you this. Mm -hmm. Or maybe just think about it differently. What if you put this on your opponent's monster? Oh, wait. If I put this on an opponent's monster, that target gains attack. If that target destroys a monster by... Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then you can attack into it with all your monsters. I guess if you have managed to attack with, like... Assuming that your opponent's monster is at zero attack, you would need eight things, but uh, we're just assuming that an opponent has a monster with at least uh, at least 1,000 attack at the end of its turn, then you just need four attacks. That seems doable if you use, like, uh, sca Scapegoat gives you three tokens, which could attack into this. Let me give uh, you another... Or, like, any other small... Let me give you another little thing to think about. What if you had a monster... What if you attached this to your opponent's monster and you had a monster that kept bringing itself back out of the graveyard when it was destroyed by battle? Okay, that would make it even easier. That even with my previous version, I feel like that would already be good. So... I don't think this was generically played, but I feel like it uh, could be, have been the finish of a combo, so it probably is pretty good. Now, let me just tell you, this card is the reason why Colossal Fighter is in every extra deck. How does Colossal Fighter deal with this specifically? Colossal Fighter brings itself back from the graveyard every time it's destroyed by battle. Oh, it can... Oh, it does that after it's destroyed by battle. Correct. Oh. <laughs> that... But then you were... But then your opponent also would need to have something big enough for this to work. Or I guess you would need to have two armory arms. You as but long yeah. as, as long as there's no warriors in the graveyard, your opponent has to have a monster with only with, with, one eight. with only eighteen hundred and fifty or more attack. And it's very relevant for your opponent to have something more than that. If there's one warrior in the graveyard, they have to have nineteen fifty. Basically if they have anything yeah. relevant on their board, like anything relevant. If they have a Stardust Dragon, if they have a, uh, literally anything. If they have a, a Black Wing Synchro, if they have anything on the board that has, like, any attack over 1800 whatsoever, you just make an Armory Arm, equip it to the monster, make a Colossal Fighter, and then you win the game by attacking into their monster, bringing Colossal Fighter back, attacking into the monster again, and keep doing that until they die. That sounds like a pretty non-fun way to lose. It is not a fun way <laughs> to lose the game, though. No. But it is a very fun way to win the game. <laughs> so this is a very generic, every deck can play it, way to just win the game. So your opponent has to play around you having a Colossal Fighter with an Armory Arm. So I, I did want to show you Colossal Fighter before I showed you Armory Arm to see if you put two and two together. But I think you didn't really think about equipping Armory Arm to your opponent's card. So I, I wanted to tell you that that was a good thing to be doing together. Yeah, I, I also totally didn't realize that uh, Colossal Fighter could target itself. Yep, any warrior. Crazy, right? That actually is crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, let's go to the third card then. And I promise you this has nothing to do with the first two. Ally of Justice, Catasta. It is uh, level 5. 
generic synchro, a machine synchro to be specific, a dark machine, at the start of the damage step. If this guy battles a face up non dark monster, destroy that monster. Um, a non dark monster. I think throughout most of Yu Gi Oh! Dark monsters were probably the most represented uh, attribute. Dark monsters are highly are highly represented in Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. history and also highly represented in Edison with a couple of really good decks being, you know, Black Wings and Chaos at variants. Yeah. So, the start of damage step. So, if I get this correctly, you attack the monster it then gets destroyed and your attack gets cancelled? Or what happens? It still counts as Ally of Justice to test her battling the monster, as far as battles go. And it's the start of the damage step, meaning that you don't get the damage calculation, so you would not take any life points if, if the monster that you're attacking is non-dark and higher attack points. And you, but also, your opponent will also not take any life points either if, you, if, Ally, if Cataster's attack points is more than theirs and it's a non that make sense? It doesn't get the yeah, damage calculation. But, okay, but you don't get any additional attacks. No. So... That'd be crazy. <laughs> if you yeah, got additional attacks. That would, actually, that would actually be pretty crazy. That'd be good. Yeah. I, I think that's the thing that gets an additional t attack whenever it battles a plant or something. That's like something oddly specific like that. But, um... So, out of the cards I have seen today, the only good non-dark was Armourian, which uh, probably won't ever battle. That is correct. If Armourian is battling, you're in a rough spot. <laughs> <laughs> so, and against Armourian, that effect would literally be a downside, because you're just missing out on 400 damage. Yes. So... Honestly, honestly, this also just doesn't, like, what would you, this could be like, if you know, like, uh, were matches at that time also, like, best of three, or? Best of three. So this could have been, like, a sideboard card, or side deck, I think it's called in Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, I feel like... In the cases that it's useful, this feels like invaluable. But uh, isn't that enough upside to play this? I'd say yes, this is enough upside. This this card was ac actively played, uh, and then you either sideboard it out against, uh, against dark archetypes, or you would... Uh, Start it in your sideboard and then sideboard it in against a non-dark archetype. Final answer? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this card is one of the best synchros in the format. So you got you got it right. Mm. This card is good, but it's way, way better than just a sideboard card. Um Oh. Yeah. Against dark decks, you just don't make this. You just make a you just make a different a different synchro. You just don't ever go for it. But Against non-dark decks, and there's there's quite a few of them, even though like the one of the best decks in the format of the best couple decks uh, are have dark monsters in them. A lot of times they're going to make synchro plays that are not dark, or they're going to they're going to uh, they're going to have a big uh, creature, a big monster on the board that is not dark. And a lot of the times, none of, none of the rest of your extra deck can get around it unless you had Gataster in your extra deck. Uh, and also mm -hmm. against decks that don't have dark monsters at all, this card just stonewalls their deck forever, and they have to try to draw an answer to this card before they can ever attack. Uh, or like if you just have Catastrophe on your board and nothing else, sometimes your opponent just can't win the game. Sometimes it, it, it's it's pretty rare, but if you summon a, a Catastrophe at attack position, your opponent just cannot can never win uh, in some matches. Like say you're playing against Light Sworn and you're playing against a Judgment Dragon, and you're like, how am I ever going to get rid of this Judgment Dragon, right? And then you're like, wait, Colossal Fighter, there's no warriors in the graveyard, so, like, that's pretty bad. I can't attack with a Judgment Dragon this way. How am I ever going to do this, right? Well, Alley of Justice Contaster is kind of, like, your answer to almost the entire format. Mm. 
So that's why it was a staple in sideboards, and sometimes opponents just could never deal with this. So you did get it right. Good job. Cool. Okay. I I still feel like I undershot a bit, but uh... yeah, you 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 said it was like a like a sideboard card, like a little bit niche, but and this card was very 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 good, like the best five the best level five synchro in the game. But I'll get I'll give the point to you since you did say it was good. Okay. Moving on to... I'll take three yeah, points. Yeah, you'll take it. <laughs> Alright, moving on to the last <laughs> card, and that is this one. Ancient Sacred Viver. You seen this one? That just doesn't sound like anything I have ever heard before. Okay, good. One... So it's uh, level seven. It's one light tuner and one or more non-tuners. So it's like... Closed. It's not really generic, but uh, at least it's not locked into a specific archetype. And uh, I already have the information that Light Swan is probably pretty good. Then, while your life points is higher than your opponent's, this card gains attack equal to the difference. While your life point is lower than your opponent's, this card loses attack to the difference. When this card's destroyed by veterans enter the graveyard, you can pay 1,000 life points special summon this card. Uh, it has to be destroyed by battle. So, you can put an armory arm on this. <laughs> and I knew you would think that. That's why, that's why <laughs> I gave it to you. <laughs> um, or not on this, but onto like an opponent's monster. Correct. But realistically speaking, with this one, you're paying 1,000 LP every time, and you're dealing less damage to your opponent, and you are taking more damage. So this would just be strictly worse than Colossal Fighter. Unless you couldn't make a level 8 synchro, and this one's level 7. True. But I feel like level 8 might almost be easier to make than level 7. Yeah, my brain is just thinking about a lot of archetypes have, like, similar levels on a lot of cards, so I usually think even synchros are easier to make than odd synchros. That's, that's not always true. Like, like back, back then in, in 2010, um, there were some cards that were, like, level 4 tuners that you can just put with a level 4 monster, but they were very few and far between. Like, you had to play, like, really bad yep. level 4 tuners to... To be able to uh, put a level four with a level four, yeah. Okay, and I would assume those uh, tuners that uh, can change their level were even rarer. Yeah, very rare. If not, I don't even know if they existed back then. So definitely not Unizombie or anything like that. That that didn't exist. So there are multiple ways in which this could be good. It just by default, can infinitely destroy and resummon itself. If your opponent has a big enough monster. Or I guess semi-infinitely, because you get your life points down, but you can get them down in a controlled manner. So, maybe that's a thing that wants you to have low life points, or there's just a combo that gets you really high life points, and then you just knock out your opponent. And it's the different in life points. So if you manage to burn your opponent for a bit, then so if your opponent is down 3,000 life and you are at full life, this becomes lethal. Which doesn't seem that hard to do. And I think Lightsworn do gain life, right? Do they? Lightsworn's not really. What was it? But you, you may previously mentioned a card that gained life, the something something Archfiend. Um, yes, Thought Ruler Archfiend does gain life. That is a level 8 synchro that people played in the format. And it, it gains life when it destroys a creature, and you presumably deal damage when you destroy that creature, and after that you could finish your opponents off with that. So I... I'd say this was played. This this seems like it might just be big enough to uh, completely uh, destroy your opponent. On the other hand, I mean, it's kind of like with, uh, with Colossal Fighter. 
you with both effects kind of not meshing with each other well. It could also get bigger than Colossal Fighter because you could have more. This is kind of weird because uh, it's a card that rely that has an effect that wants it to be big, but then it has an effect that relies on it being destroyed. I feel like this is just the worst Colossal Fighter. So it, if you're going second, if you're playing a going second deck that somehow gains life or just burns a bit and stuff, then you could use this as a finisher and win. So I'd say this card was played in some sort of going second deck. Okay, so you're saying that it was good. I'm saying that it was good. This card was very, very rarely played, but this card was not good in Edison Corrupt. Um, the reason for it being is that it's a little bit win more. Like, it's better when, it's, when you're winning, and then it's not good at all when you're not winning. So, if you're already winning, you might as well just play a different level 7 Synchro at, at any point of the game. Because you'd rather play level 7 Synchro in your extra deck that can even get you back from being behind, and this one can't do that. Because you have a limited extra deck space, you only have 15 cards to play with, so if you're going to have a level 7, you might as well have one that's also good when you're behind, instead of having one that's only good when you're ahead. Yes, it can contribute to... Uh, different OTKs that you would not be able to get otherwise, but I don't know if you remember, or if you know of these cards, but Ancient Fairy Dragon was also in this format. And that's a level 7 synchro that is proactive um, that, you, that you'd that you play in your extra deck. There's also Black Rose Dragon, which you've probably heard of that was played in this format. Oh. That was, that, um, that you've definitely heard of. <laughs> Everyone's heard of Black Rose Dragon. Yeah. Um, that card can even, if you're playing any plants in your deck, can also can do a similar thing to Ancient Sacred Wyvern by banishing a plant from your graveyard to switch the, tech, switch the battle position of one of your opponent's monsters and be able to kill your opponent that way, even if you're not blowing up the board with, with Black Rose Dragon. There's also okay. another level 7 synchro in this format called Arcanite Magician, and that card has a, bit, has a pretty big attack if you don't destroy anything. It has two spell counters on it, but it also can take spell counters off to destroy your opponent's cards. So that can also contribute to you attacking for lethal through your opponent's cards, because all you have to do is kill your opponent's monsters and attack for lethal. So Ancient Sacred Wyvern is is a very, very niche card, and I can't even think of a deck that would even that even played this card right off the bat. You only you need light tuners, so I think the only deck to play this was Light Swarms. Uh, you, if, if, any, if anyone in the comments can tell me what deck actually played this, uh, let me know. But I know that in the Edison in the Edison format, there was only one tournament, and this card did not make the top eight of the tournament at all. Um, I, I don't hmm. believe. And um, this card just was not good enough um, in the format, even though it had like very very niche use. So um, you got the niche use down pat, that's for sure. But this card was not as good <laughs> as as the other level sevens that you could be playing. Okay, yeah. Um... And if you didn't know anything about Yu-Gi-Oh at yeah. all, it would be a terrible yeah. example because saying saying that. Oh, there were cards that were better anyway. There's no way of you knowing if there were better cards, but you've heard of Ancient yeah. Fairy Dragon and you've heard of Black Rose Dragon, yeah. so and maybe you've even heard of Arcanite Magician, but those cards were all better than Ancient Sacred Wyvern at the time. Unfortunately. I want this card to be good. Yeah. I wanted this card to be good, but it just wasn't good enough due to its restriction to summon itself and it being a little bit one more. I guess if you say it that way, it uh, makes it definitely makes more sounds. But anyway, I guess that really makes sense. I'm also not sure how big uh, those OTK style decks even were at that time. They they weren't they weren't very strong oh, since what? trap cards were very good back then as well. Trap cards are a little bit less good nowadays unless yeah. you're playing a card like evenly matched or some other broken searchable trap card. Um, back then, trap cards were playable that were like compulsory evacuation device, bottomless trap hole, um, tra trap cards that actually that uh, would not see play nowadays at all. The format was slow enough back then to mm -hmm. where trap cards did see play. Hopefully, hopefully you had a good snapshot back into April 24, 25th, 2010, where you put yourself back into school for the time, <laughs> for, uh, for these cards. But um, I, I, uh, hopefully you learned a lot about how, how, um, how Yu-Gi-Oh was back in the day. And I know you have a, a year of experience playing Master Duel, and hopefully some of these uh, blew your mind as far as how, how good or bad they were back yeah. then. Yeah, I mean, uh, some of these just uh, seem pretty unplayable today. I, I guess most of these. 
Yeah, you said you started saying that everything was bad. <laughs> if, if, yeah, if, if you, I think you might have said every single one of these were bad. No, I almost I caught Catasta though. You did, you did, you did catch Catasta, but I, I think there was a time period Rich. where you almost thought it was bad for a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jan, thank you very yeah. much for coming on the show. You have one video per month since you're a Patreon patron. If you want to be on the on the show as well, yeah. you can check the Patreon link down in the description below. Also, check the check the description down below to to get 5% off of literally everything in the Prodigy Game Store by using code the one at checkout. 5% is massive. It's basically almost like getting all of tax off if you if you're if you pay income tax in your area. So who doesn't like not paying tax? I love not paying tax. Anyway, have a good rest of your day. <laughs> I'll see you next time. And as always, peace.